I'm grateful to be out of that mask for a second. It's really hot in there. <laughs> Shana Tova, kol ami. <laughs> last year, I, first of all, was over there last year. Uh, this year, or last year, I remember looking out over this incredibly packed sanctuary, and I remember saying to you all how I wish you could have the view that I have. So I must admit that this is eerie. Never in my wildest dreams would I have imagined a scenario where I would be, would be delivering a Kol Nidre appeal to a mainly empty sanctuary. Thank you all for being here. <laughs> it is my sincere hope, however, that this is the first and last time that a president of this great community has to do this. Last year, I gave you all some very personal reasons why I believe wholeheartedly in Kol Ami. And, why, and I was carried by the energy in the room that night. This year, with, again, a mostly empty sanctuary, it'll be a little bit more difficult, but not impossible. I have my Zoom screens in front of me, so I see a lot of you over there, and I have the people here physically. Last year was a talk that I had begun to prepare many, many years earlier. This year, I started writing these words on August the 26th. What a difference a year makes. I'm still not sure what my message to you should be. At least that's what I wrote back on the 26th. But here's a hint. I did actually finish on Wednesday, September 16th. So I did finally figure out where to go. If you read my September highlights, you know that last year I did not spend much of my time talking about finance. Uh, and I really kind of want to do the same thing this year. But I do want everyone that's watching and listening to at least know the numbers we're talking about. Our budget for this fiscal year is to raise $45,000 through a Kol Nidre appeal. That is a number that's based on what everyone so generously did last year. Can we do that again in a virtual world? Our budget also calls for $35,000 from our gala fundraiser. We don't have a date. We don't know what we're doing yet for that. Can we do that again in a virtual world? These are the questions that keep me and I know most of the members of the Finance Committee up at night. And I'm hopeful that tonight we can say at least one of those goals has been met. To break down the math for you, $45,000 divided by 330 family units is $137 per family unit. And we're there. So there you go. That's what I'm going to say about the numbers and now we can go on to the main event. And I hope you're not tired of me saying this. And I, uh, maybe I've said it more than once or twice, as my dad likes to say, stop me if you've heard this before. But I really do believe that it is an honor, a true honor, to be the president of Kol Ami. When I tell people that I am the president of my shul, I invariably hear the I'm so sorry, or what did you do wrong, or you know, what happened to everybody else? And my response is almost always the same, that I'm deeply committed to Kol Ami, that it has been some of the most rewarding work I've done as a volunteer, that I feel like I am the right person at the right time to be where I am. This is an important topic to me. It has been for a long time. If we continue as a society to, bel to belittle the positions of leadership, then the expected result will be that no one wants to be a leader. And so I'm asking all of you to help bring honor and credibility to being a leader. Now I must admit, this year has tested me on this. My first year included welcoming Rabbi Blatt, both Rabbi Blatt's and their unbelievable kids, and all that that entailed. Welcome dinners, transition meetings, high holiday meetings, installation ceremonies, more transition meetings. It was lots of fun. We also completed a long-awaited change to our bylaws. Rabbi Blatt and I attended a USCJRA convention, first combined one I think that they have ever had. And with the help of a lot of people, we revamped our website. Hopefully you've seen it. We continue to do the work of our recharge, or we were continuing to do the work of our recharge committee. 
to align Colomy's mission and vision to our long-term strategy, and many other things. That all changed in February and March, and it has brought a year of lows, which have been trying. We closed this physical building. We worked, tried to work as hard as we could to ensure our virtual existence as a kihila, kadosha, a holy community was robust and engaging. We formed a task force, which has done some of the most difficult work we've ever had to do as an organization. And I don't say that lightly after 40 years plus of existence. We planned for a mainly virtual high holiday, something no one really wanted to do. And when you take all of that and you add it to the general anxiety that is clearly palpable in our society today, you can see why it may be a challenging year. There have been times, it's gonna be hard for me on this paragraph, guys, hold tight with me. <laughs> there have been times I have questioned my ability to be an effective president. Am I doing all that I can? What mistakes am I making? How can I fix them? <sighs> am I the right person to lead Colomy through this pandemic and all that it involves? Am I doing more harm than good? I can tell you there have been way more sleepless nights for me since March than I had all of last year. And then suddenly it came to me. It seems every few years a Colomy past president will remind us of something. Last time I believe it's Jeff Hines. Jeff, I actually see you. Hi. <laughs> but it originally came from Gary Tublum. I'm gonna pause here for a second to give our our wonderful cameraman Chris a chance to zoom out and move to where I want him to go. There we go. You see it? It's the indentation in our Jerusalem stone above the rabbi's Amud. Thank you, Chris. You can move back to me now. I'm done. Hopefully everybody saw it. As Gary told us so many years ago, this was a part of the design of our sanctuary. Many of you don't know that. It was intentionally put here to remind us that we are imperfect, that even in the best of times, we are not without fault. This seems particularly relevant to me during this time of Teshuvah. When I think of that indentation and what it represents, I recognize that I have certainly had my share of shortfalls, but the indentation tells me that that's okay. That's part of the process. That's our community. We are bigger than any one person, any one president. We will all be better for our shortfalls in the long run, as long as we continue to learn and to take care of each other. Honestly, that would be enough, Dayenu. However, I've spent the last couple of weeks reflecting on how we as a holy community have responded to this pandemic. And then I'm suddenly filled again with the renewed spirit and zest that keeps me energized. We must all continue to work together as conservative Jews in this tiny part of the world we call home with a pseudo quote from Tevye the Milkman. And I know this is hard. I know that even as I am speaking right now, there are dedicated, long-standing, founding members of this community who are not hearing me as they are not comfortable with the idea of a virtual Kol Nidre. There are many of us who so desperately long for a time when we can once again gather in a physical space and share our communal voice, our kol ami, voice of my people. And yet I strongly feel we also deserve to pat each other on the back. Our community is engaged, even if it is virtual. How do I know we're engaged? Well, join us on a Shabbat morning virtual service and you'll see not just new faces, but new faces that are leaving, leading services that they haven't led before. People reading Torah who have not historically read Torah. Here's a hint, as long as we're doing virtual Torah readings, you don't have to learn it without the vowels. It's way easier, so I encourage you to, to try, give it a try. How do I know we're engaged? Log on to a weeknight minion, any night. Thursday is what I hear is usually the hardest night to get a minion, but it doesn't matter, regardless of the day. 
It is powerful that Kolomi shows up in force on these Zoom minyanim, typically 20 plus screens of people coming together virtually to make sure people can say Kaddish in these times. How do I know we're engaged? I look at the collective work of brotherhood and sisterhood, adult and family education, Kol Yeladim Religious School, membership, social action, and so many more. Think of the programming that has exploded these last many months. We've had classes on viruses. We've had Talmud classes, cooking classes, eating healthy classes. We've had prospective membership drives. We've had scavenger hunts, trivia nights, thank you, Dan Ackman, concerts with our own Nachum Peter style and our beloved Dr. David Berger, and all have been incredibly well attended. Geez, we even had an online shaving event just to watch me shave, and we raised $5,000. <laughs> How do I know we're engaged? I look at who's attending our meetings on Zoom, our board members, our executive committee members, our ritual, our task force, our finance, dues, membership, and so many more. Not only are we seeing the largest attendance in years, it's actually people that are actively participating. How do I know we're engaged? I was home for Rosh Hashanah. I saw 170 screens on Rosh Hashanah day one and 130 on day two, with a significant amount uh, in addition on live stream. And not only that, there were still at least 100 screens that were active all the way till the end of Musaf, both days. Now that's never happened. How do I know we're engaged? I look at the numbers. I know, I promised I wouldn't talk about the numbers, but here, I kind of have to. In April and May, we had more families prepay their entire year of dues for, the, for this current fiscal year than we've had in years. It might have been a record number, I don't remember. As we started this fiscal year in June, we've seen what I would call a huge start to this fiscal year, with many families paying their full year of commitment in July and August. That could not be happening unless people felt like they were a part of something special. I am hopeful that by hearing all of this, you can see that although our physical structure is still relatively closed up, our spiritual structure is not only intact, it's thriving. Now as our world begins to figure out how to live in this new reality, the task force continues to have deliberate discussions on bringing us back together in person. We have already started, as you saw during the Torah service last weekend, and with some limited in-person Sunday morning minyanim to test our ability to keep people safe while we pray together. We're beginning to talk through how we can take it to the next step. Soon, we're very hopeful to have limited in-person Shabbat services. Rabbi and many others are looking for creative and alternative ways for us to be together. Maybe you, were actual, maybe you were able to hear the actual sounds of the shofar at one of our four in-person locations after Sunday services last week. Maybe you want to sign up to have dinner with other families in our sukkah this year. Maybe you'll be able to do, uh, join us for Simchat Torah celebration, whatever that looks like. Right now I know we're doing a drive-through with Kol Yil Adim. Maybe, I said that already. <laughs> what I want is for you to hear that there's progress. However, as we have always said, pikuach hanefesh, the saving of a soul will always guide us. We're gonna do what we, we're gonna continue to be deliberate in what we do. This is not a race to be the first congregation to reopen. The consequences are simply too overwhelming if we get it wrong. Our staff and leadership are absolutely committed to finding ways to build on what we have been doing and to carve out a new normal. Just some final thoughts. I know I've been doing thank yous uh, and I can't help myself because it's, it's way bigger than what I've been able to do. So I have a couple of big ones here. Um, Thank you to Rabbi Blatt. I'm going to lose it again. <laughs> you are the partner our congregation has been looking for. You are my trusted confidant, and I cannot tell you how much I've enjoyed working with you. May you continue to grow, grow in your role 
and lead us to bigger and better things. Thank you to Kalman Pila. You have been a rock for Kolami for as long as I've been here. And it has been my great privilege to have you as the president-elect. Your temperament, your knowledge of all things Kolami, and most of all, your Menschlichkeit way of carrying yourself will continue to serve you well. And I want to say thank you for saying yes. And I wrote in parentheses and Ethel, because I think we all know that it was more Ethel maybe. But thank you. Thank you to Mitch Weiss, my brother. Go Bolts. <laughs> what you mean to each of us here, our lay leadership, our staff, our entire community, is beyond what can be put into words. You are a treasure to call me, and your friendship means the world to me. Thank you. My mishpacha, Deborah, Noah, Evan, I don't know how you guys put up with me. I really don't. <laughs> but I want to thank you for letting me take over our living room for virtual services every Friday night and every Saturday morning, scattering you guys to the other parts of the house. <laughs> and I want to thank you for letting me do this, letting me be president of this beloved Kolami. I'm more than aware of the absence it has created for you, but I'm also eternally hopefully that you, Noah, and Evan have learned of the importance of Jewish leadership. Our people have been around for several thousand years, and we will be for several thousand more. But that only happens if the next generation is ready to say, Hineni, here am I, and I know you are. And finally, thank you to Kolami. This place is special. So many people over so many years have poured their heart and soul, and yes, their money, into Kolami. There's still much for us to do. With this ongoing pandemic, there's much that remains unknown. Now, every Shabbat morning, for those of you who join me, I ask you to, to join along with me as I read a prayer for our community where we ask for blessings for, quote, those who devote themselves to establish synagogues for prayer, as well as those who enter them to pray, and those who provide for their maintenance. So please, Take your pledge card, bend down, ideally an amount at least as much as you did last year, but at least greater than $137. Pretty, 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 pretty please, with sugar on top even. <laughs> and a cherry if, it, if you need it, so that we can meet our budget. And this year, you got to remember to send it back to us. There are no ushers coming to the aisles to pick up your pledge cards tonight. <laughs> So we're 100% reliant on you to send it back to, to us. May the new year 5781 keep us safe and healthy, and may we soon be able to come together in person again. Be yachad. Gemara Chatimah